My name is Henry Morris. I am the son of, in our family, we call him the real Dr. Morris. He's the, the founder of the Institute for Creation Research. I am currently the chief executive officer. Book of Genesis is probably not dealt with very much because it's not very well understood. I think that's the basic reason. Probably secondarily because most of our churches think of themselves as New Testament churches and tend to, well, maybe ignore is too strong a word, but they tend to pick stories out of the Old Testament that are familiar rather than trying to do a uh, expository series from the book of Genesis. And as a result, most people don't know much about the book of Genesis. Well, basically because they're the words of God. Anytime God says something, it's important. And to say that God doesn't know how to use words, oh my goodness, talk about denigrating the character of God. To say that God really changed his mind and didn't mean a day when he meant billions of years, well, that's just downright silly. So to say that there's another option that we can make the words of Genesis mean something else, is essentially superimposing ourselves over the words of God. Some years ago, 2005, I believe it was completed, we did a project called uh, RATE, dealing with radiometric uh, dating in the age of the Earth. During that process, which was several years involved, we took samples from the Grand Canyon on a number of rock layers where igneous rocks were exposed and then sent those rock samples to the top laboratory in the country. Actually, there are three major labs across the country that we used and asked them in a blind test to date the rocks that we sent them. The interesting part of this was that in each case, same rock, same lab, we got widely variation in dates from almost as much as treble the amount of dating involved from a few hundred million years to almost two billion years. Same rock, same lab. And one began to wonder then, why are we not getting the same date out of the same rock from the same lab? And basically the answer is the assumptions for the formula are just incorrect. Yes, one of the difficulties with uh, age dating of rocks is that you're not really looking at a clock that's available. You're trying to analyze the chemicals, or in some cases, the gases that are trapped in the rocks as they solidify from a liquid state to a solid state. The lower rock layers of our Earth are usually granites of some sort. And in those granites, some crystalline structures are trapped, most noticeably in what we call zircons. And typically they're in things uh, that are like basalts or mica, things of that nature. One of the problems is that those rocks are supposed to be at least a billion years, a billion with a B. And as uh, the minerals in the rock are trapped, one of the common processes is that the, word, the mineral uranium changes into lead over time. It's got a certain rate that's pretty easy to measure. And as the process of change takes place, some alpha particles are released that are essentially helium atoms. And helium is a noble gas that escapes, doesn't bond to anything. So it ought to be all gone, certainly in a billion years. But when we test these crystals, and they still have a lot of helium in them, we say, ooh, something's wrong with the formula here, because we should not see any helium in these very basement rocks, the lowest layers. And wherever we tested them, we always found helium remaining, sometimes in some larger quantities. One of the things all geologists agree on now, since Mount St. Helens, by the way, is that most of the rock layers that are sedimentary rocks, the mud flows, were formulated by some form of hydraulic deposition, some form of water-deposited rock. That's what sedimentary rock really is, as a matter of fact. 
And sedimentary rock is everywhere, all over the surface of the Earth, sometimes miles deep. Oh, we're talking about a lot of water and a lot of mud here. And there really isn't any evidence in the rocks themselves. You can't date sedimentary rocks like you can igneous rocks. You can't put a chemical process to it because it's all mixed up. So typically what is done is looking at the fossils or something of that nature. But fossils are evidence of very rapidly buried dead animals. And usually they're badly dismembered. You rarely find us a whole critter except marine invertebrates like a clam or a trilobite or starfish or coral or something like that. Find lots of those. Find lots of teeth, by the way, because they're pretty solid. But you don't find lots of complete critters. You find a few, but most of them are in bone beds and they're all mixed up just like you'd expect to find in some sort of a flood deposit. And since it's worldwide, planet-wide, one would suspect that this catastrophe is a really big deal. The Bible talks about such a catastrophe. Uh, God says he was really mad when he brought it because the world had become so sinful that even God was angry and flooded the world. Peter says that world that then existed perished being flooded with water. We think the rocks and the layers and the fossils are evidence of that flood. There are a number of worldwide processes that tell us the Earth is a lot younger than the evolutionary scale would require. One of them is the decay of the magnetic moment, the forces, the energy of the magnetic field. Primarily, it is a reduction that's been measured pretty carefully over about the last 130 years or so. It reduces itself by one half over about 1,400 years. So 10,000 years ago, we've got a magnetic field that was really, really strong. 40,000 years ago, it's about the size of a magnetic star, which would rip all the iron out of your blood. That, that's a no-no. So we suggest that the planet is much younger than we normally think, because all of the decay processes indicate it's a young planet, not an old one. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for uh talking with us today and uh, can you tell us do you have a website or yes. a, a place that people can learn more about your ministry? Thank you. ICR has a major website. It's just icr.org. icr.org. We've been at it now for about 45 years and all of that archives is on the website. You can wear out a gazillion printers printing all of that stuff off if you want to. But it's searchable like a Google search. It's something you can use as your resource for your own study.